Hi, my name's Adrian. My name is Hannah. And we're here with the Didge Project, and we're really excited for today's video because we want to introduce you to a whole range of different sound healing instruments and show you a little bit how you might use them on people. Well, we're here surrounded by tons of sound healing instruments from all over the world, and we're really excited to show you a few of them today. There are so many different categories of sound healing instruments, so we're going to walk you through just a few, and if there's interest in the series, we're going to come back and show you more as time goes on. So please hit like or subscribe and make a comment in the video with your favorite moments, and if you want to see more videos like this, what you might want to see demonstrated, and if we have them, we'll be happy to show you. So the first instrument that we want to show you today is called an abuelo flute, which means grandfather in Spanish. This flute is handmade by Tito La Rosa, and Tito La Rosa is an Andean master flute builder and player. If you haven't heard the music of Tito La Rosa, please check it out. It's really incredible. I was fortunate enough to record an album and he's featured on it, so we'll put a link to that so you can hear it and find other of his music. This flute is made of bamboo, and we're now carrying them through the Didge Project store, so definitely want to go there and get one right away. These are handcrafted, exquisite, just top-of-the-line instruments. I've played many flutes from around the world and I can confidently say that these are some of the most balanced, powerful, harmonic overtone flutes is another word uh, for abuelo flute, the overtone flute, and it's just extraordinary. So uh, this one is pretty long, but they make shorter ones as well, and the ones we're carrying are a little shorter. This one is the note D, I believe we have the note F, and uh, we might have some others coming, but check back to see what we have as the stock changes. Now this flute is an overtone flute, meaning that it doesn't have any holes to use with your fingers like you might have seen with other Native American style flutes or like the chromatic 12 note flute that you can play in classical music. This flute is controlled entirely by your breath. So the harder that you blow, you're going to get a different note out of it. So you can get at least five, sometimes seven or eight different overtones out of the instrument. So I just want to show you a little bit how to use the instrument on a person. So Han is here with me and I'm going to play the instrument a little bit and pass it around her body and maybe she can share for us what the experience is like. a little bit about what it was like to hear that flute and feel it pass around so close to your body. It was really nice in a sense I felt it was calling me from very far away and also bringing me back at the same time because it's just such a sharp sound that really hits you really deep. Another reason that this is such a great sound healing instrument is that you only need one hand to play it since you don't need to use your fingers to change the different holes and you change the notes just by blowing harder or softer. That frees up my other hand to use another instrument. For instance, a shaker is a great choice, so I can show you how I can play both at once. which for sound healing is also really great because then I can be using, for instance, the shaker on the person and the flute at the same time. So any other instrument that you might be able to play with your free hand is going to be available to you by using a one-handed instrument like this. Next you have the ocean drum. So do you want to share us a little bit of your experience? Yeah, this, this instrument is really powerful. It's actually quite loud, it can be. Um, and it's creating a, like a wave of sound that's just totally blocking out all the other sounds. So if you are somebody that for instance likes a white noise machine when you sleep or you have to sleep with a fan on or something like that this instrument kind of creates a white noise effect just like being by the ocean will do and 
I find that that helps really to clear your mind easily. There's just so much sound in the space. And it also, like she said, reminds me of the water. And you can really use your imagination to kind of journey with that sound. So some people do drum journeys and things like that. And this is a great instrument. It's again, very simple and intuitive. So you don't need to know much. You just play with it very organically and try to get it to sound like the waters. So uh, a simple instrument, but a powerful instrument. It's a drum that was especially designed to imitate the sound of the ocean. So it functions by having all these metal beads inside and by moving them gently over the skin of the drum you imitate the sound of the waves and thus just bringing the ocean wherever you are. You may have seen our other videos or demonstrations about the mallet harp and I wanted to show you this because it's a similar instrument in some ways, but this is made out of crystal instead of metal. And so the tones are going to be different, and it's a very beautiful sound. A lot of crystal instruments are very popular among sound healers today and in sound healing communities. So you might have seen crystal bowls we're going to show in this video, crystal harp like this, a uh, crystal pyramid which we'll also show you, and there's just more and more instruments that we're finding made out of crystal. The reasons for why it's a popular choice for sound healing are probably related to the fact that crystals are also used in a lot of different healing modalities, and crystals are one of these very universal earth elements. We find them all over the place. Crystals are found all over the world, and they're known for their properties of memory. That's partly why they're used in so many technologies today, like computers and hard drives and sonograms, and more and more, the list goes on. Uh, Silicon Valley gets its name really from the crystals. And so their properties are very powerful. They're highly organized structures. And so because of that, they're very balanced. And the sounds that you get out of them can sustain for a very long time. And they're very bright and clear and even. Some people describe crystal as being very angelic sounding, and I, I think that's a good description. It, it really works with the upper energies. The vibrations are very high frequencies, and so that can be very stimulating to the head, uh, as opposed to some other instruments that are deeper resonance, like a drum, for instance, where you think about a bass instruments that are in the low frequencies, you can really feel them in your body, you can feel them in your stomach. This instrument is very activating in the head. So when I go to a person, I may bring it close to their ears, to their third eye point, but also to the heart. And really the whole body is able to pick up on the frequencies. So it's good everywhere, but I would say especially in the upper part. So this is another instrument worth considering if you're looking to acquire more sound healing instruments in your life. It's again very easy and intuitive to play, like most sound healing instruments. There's no wrong note, and it's as simple as striking it with the rubber mallet. So, pretty hard to go wrong. Uh, it is a fragile instrument, so one of the downsides to crystal instruments is that you need to be very careful how you transport them, how you pack them, where you're taking them, and who you're letting use them. So, uh, if fragile is not the best thing to have around, maybe you have small children that might be getting into things, you just want to be aware that you're keeping it somewhere safe. So here I have some Koshi chimes, just to give you a little sense of how they sound and why they're so great for sound healing is they're really easy to bring close to the body of the person you're working with. So I'll show you a little bit how I might use it. So it creates a really immersive sort of 3D experience. It's very easy to pass all around the person and maybe Hana can describe a little bit what it's like to hear them when they're coming close. 
What I like about the sound of the chimes is that even though it sounds like an instrument, it feels very close to nature. In a way, it reminded me of droplets of water surrounding myself, so a very gentle sound. That makes sense because the company actually names their four different models in honor of the four primary elements, earth, wind, fire, and water. So if you're working with a particular element in your life, maybe you feel really connected to the water right now or connected to the fire, maybe you're burning candles or doing other kinds of work that are elemental work, like grounding and things like that, then you may choose a chime that's associated with the element that you're working with right now. So again, you can check the Digi Project store. We have them all available. So Koshi chimes have become very popular sound healing instruments. And of course they fit into the broader category of just chimes in general, wind chimes, I'm sure you've seen around. These ones are made out of bamboo and they have metal spokes inside. And I think they're just really well made. They're super durable. They sound great. The scales were carefully chosen by the designers and they make an amazingly peaceful sound. You can see our full tutorial demos also on this channel. And I mentioned that there are some other kinds of chimes, so Hana has here a different example of a chime. You can hear the sound of this one. Also very nice, but very different to this. So we do them together. it starts to create a really nice ambient texture. And that sort of soundscape can be really great for guided meditation. Maybe you're doing a class and you want to guide people into something. It's a simple instrument that doesn't take a lot of focus. So you can sort of just let it sway while you talk or while you guide the person into whatever it is that you're working on. So again, a very intuitive, simple instrument and kind of an essential for anyone working with sound healing. Another instrument that works with the water element is the rain stick. So here's a little bit of what the rain stick can sound like. Or a little more forcefully. And some people even use them a bit like a shaker. You've probably seen one of these before. They come in all shapes and sizes and materials. This one's really nice because it's made out of wood and metal. I'm not sure what the seeds inside are. It may be plastic, but it may also be made out of organic material. So rain sticks obviously imitate the sound of rain and depending on the size and the design, they can last for a really long time when you turn them over. Some are even designed to go very slow, like an hour once you flip it over, almost like an hourglass. And so the rain stick can be very calming to people who are soothed by the sound of rain. Sometimes when a person grew up with a lot of rain in their environment, then when they hear rain or they're in a rainstorm, they feel very comforted by that. So in certain cases, using a rain stick is an excellent choice depending on who you're working with. And Again, it's something you can just bring around the person's body. Here we're sitting up, but a lot of times you'll have people lying down and all the instruments we're demonstrating can be used over a person who's lying down in Shavasana position, um, fully relaxed. And it's always great to encourage relaxation when you're using the instruments. In general, sound healing instruments promote relaxation, letting go, calmness, and, and supporting an inner journey of meditation. So there's a lot of ways to use a rain stick. But one thing that's nice is, again, it's a one-handed instrument. So I can use another instrument with my other hand. Or like the chimes or a bell, like we were showing before. Because a lot of times the work of sound healing is just to create an atmosphere where a person feels safe and comfortable to explore their inner world and it can be easier to do that without too many distractions around us and sound is just a great space holder for that so these types of instruments create ambient space that is very beneficial for meditation the next category of instruments that we want to show you today are called tongue drums and tongue drums are derived from an african instrument that was originally made out of wood and it's basically a block of wood that has grooves cut out of it and the resonating body of the instrument is what allows the sound to travel so 
This is a modern adaptation of that. You just strike them with your hand. Doesn't require any special knowledge to make beautiful and harmonious sounds. And we sell all kinds of these through the Ditch Project store. They come in many keys and many different sounds. Uh, so the Rav drum specifically is a type of tongue drum. This is a different type of tongue drum, just to show you by comparison. But there are many benefits to these instruments. One is that they're so simple to play. They have really long sustain, many seconds long. Some people are familiar with hong drums and other types of instruments that look similar, but they aren't quite the same. When they're cut out like grooves like this, that's what makes it a tongue drum. And it's made out of solid metal. It's basically unbreakable and very child safe and friendly. So these instruments are super beautiful, very melodic, very harmonious, very easy to play. And they come in so many different scales with different personalities. So if you go to our channel, you can watch many reviews and explanations of the different range of instruments that we have available for purchase. I love this instrument so much and it's very compatible with other instruments like flutes and guitars and the other instruments that we're showing here. Um, again, like shakers and bells happening at the same time. Maybe Hana, you can play a little bit and we can show you what it might sound like together. and harmonic foundation for a sound journey they're just really fun to play so I highly recommend them and just to show you a different scale to show you how how different of a feeling you can get out of the instrument this one is in a major key and this one's in a minor key so here's what a minor key tongue drum sounds like You can hear that the scale has a very different personality it's going to take the listener to a very different place inside and so which instruments you choose and how you use them is definitely going to have an impact on the sound healing process so sound healing is a relationship between the person who is sharing the music or the songs or the sounds and the person who is receiving it there is a, a kind of collaborative process that happens there and so when you check in with the person and you figure out what it is that they're there for and what they need uh, or what you're trying to create for people, then the instrument that you choose, how fast you play it, how hard you play it, which instruments you combine together, all these decisions are going to change the kind of atmosphere that you're creating for the meditation. So here we have a set of Himalayan bowls. So one thing you can do is you can just strike it and let it ring. And they already go for a very long time. These will still be ringing after probably a minute and a half or more. And if you're very close to the instrument, the sound is going to seem much louder, obviously, because volume is a proportion that's related to distance. So when you're using these instruments for a person, you may place it very close to their head. And they're going to have a very different experience of the sound from that distance than they will even from back here or across the room. So being aware of the proximity to the body has a big impact. These are hand hammered instruments. Some of them are machine made, but in general the hand hammered ones are considered to be better quality. And these instruments I've found to be some of the most powerful sound healing instruments that you can find around. One of the reasons is because they can have basically an infinite sustain and that means that the note never stops. Whereas with something like a flute, usually the person has to take a breath. Uh, if you know how to do circular breathing, which we teach through the Dig Project, because the Didgeridoo is an instrument that uses circular breathing, you can find tutorials and a whole program to learn the Didgeridoo. But it's just to say that not many instruments create a continuous sound. Some other instruments that do that are the harmonium and the shruti box and these bowls. 
Another thing about these instruments is that when the person is lying down and you place it directly on their chest or close to their head and on their body in different places, the stomach, the chest for instance, the vibrations are super strong and they can pass into your physical body and you'll feel that resonance, you'll feel that vibration. And I've used these instruments to help heal stomach aches and other things like that. Very good for the heart, excellent for helping you fall asleep. I've used the instruments on myself when I was having a hard time sleeping and I would lie down, place it on my chest and gently strike it over the course of about 10 minutes and found that I was almost instantly falling asleep. And so another thing that I've noticed is that because of the resonance, when people start to sing and you place it on the body, they can sort of get in touch with their own voice. It helps to really lock you into that sound. And people report being able to feel connected with their voice more than ever uh, because the instrument itself has a certain power to teach that. So this is just by striking it. Hana can show you how it sounds with a different type of mallet. Let's try this one. So the softness of the mallet creates a very different tone for the instrument. This is a harder instrument with a thin layer of felt, whereas this is a more padded substance. So this thin one brings out more of the upper overtones. And even if I were to use the wood, even higher overtones. So the mallet that you use, how hard you strike it, these are the main controls you have. But what's really great about these types of bowls is that you can start to go around them in a circular motion with gentle pressure applied evenly towards the center of the bowl. And this will continue for as long as you go. And a bunch of different tones can come out of that. But once you let go, it will start to fade. But this is what creates the drone, an infinite sound. So different drones from the different instruments will bring out different overtones. And that's why they're called singing bowls, because they really create the illusion that the bowl itself is singing like a human voice. So these are really excellent. We're also demonstrating here crystal bowls in another segment of the video. Another instrument in the category of crystal instruments is this crystal pyramid. And these are pretty rare, but I have seen them more and more over the years. And I think they're really magical. They have some of the longest sustain of any instruments I've encountered. If I strike it with the felted side of this mallet once, this sound will continue to ring for literally minutes. And whereas an instrument like a guitar, for instance, once you play the chord, it generally stops making any sound after about seven seconds at most unless it's electrified and plugged in with distortion and all kinds of effects to make it last a really long time. Drums, you strike them and then the sound almost immediately dissipates. But an instrument like this, it's still ringing. If I bring it closer to the microphone, you'll hear that. So when you bring it closer to a person's ear, it's gonna still be ringing for them even minutes later. Another thing that's really cool about this instrument when it comes to sound healing is that you can place it over the person's head. And by bringing the instrument over the person's head, they're sort of wrapped in sound waves, which can be really beautiful. And one other thing that's awesome about it is if you spin it, you'll hear that the sound sort of goes around in all directions. So that waviness that comes from the sound, the kind of woo -woo 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 effect. is also pretty trippy when you put it over a person's head. So it's a really awesome sound healing instrument. I have a lot of fun playing it. Sometimes I put it on a stand because it rings for so long that I can just hit it, leave it on the stand, and it will be ringing while I go and pick up other instruments, like the other instruments we've demonstrated in this video. So if you're playing alone, it can be really good because it sort of plays itself in that sense. 
So, Hanno, how would you describe the sound and what it feels like to listen to it and when it's spinning over your head? I mean, a little bit like the muddy ship is coming to get me. <laughs> it's definitely an instrument from space. And it requires lasers to make an instrument like this. It's something that's only been possible in recent times because of technology. It would have been very difficult to imagine carving an instrument like this out of a piece of crystal. Of course, it could be done um, in other ways, but modern technology has enabled us to invent a lot of instruments, including some of the ones that we've been showing in this video. All right, let's find out what I have inside of this bag. And I don't know if you've ever seen this before or if you're familiar with tuning forks, but this has got to be the most amazing tuning fork I've ever seen. This thing is not only enormous, but it just has a very powerful frequency. I want to just show you what, it's, what it sounds like, but also use it on Hana, and then she can describe a little bit of what it feels like to receive those vibrations. So, Hannah, maybe you can describe for us a little bit what the vibrations feel like in your body. You always feel the vibrations of all the instruments in your body, but I feel particularly in this one, it was really poignant how it moved all the way from the top of my head straight into my heart. So you could really feel how it just moves inside in a very quick way. So, it's definitely yeah. special. There are different types of tuning forks. Tuning forks were used for tuning pianos because the metal is built to a certain dimension that it produces a frequency when you strike it. So then the piano tuner would put it on the instrument, strike the tuning fork, hear the note, and match the string of the piano to tune it up to that. But certain people in the field of sound healing began to realize that you can tune not only instruments, but the human body using tuning forks and the biofield. So there are books about this and tuning forks are some of the more popular sound healing instruments you can find around. This has got to be the most extreme version of a tuning fork I've ever seen. Um, but they make tuning forks which you press to the person's body and the vibrations transmit through the body. It's not something I'm able to show you in a video, but take my word for it, this instrument sends powerful vibrations into the body. And I'm just really amazed at how long it sustains for. Even if I hit it once, it's still going about as strong as it did when I first hit the instrument, which is pretty amazing. I'm not sure how long the sustain will be. I'm not even going to make you sit here and wait for it to stop. But if I bring it closer to the microphone, you'll hear that it's still going very strong. might win against the pyramid. Yeah, we'd have to see. I wonder which instrument has the longer sustain. It's a heavy instrument, um, that's for sure. So you might get a little tired if you're in a room of 30 or 40 people trying to do a sound bath and you're walking around to every single person with the instrument. And that's something to consider when you're thinking about which instrument you're gonna get. Are you stationary? Are you gonna be walking around? Are the people sitting upright or lying down? So that will help you decide what you might wanna use. There are much smaller tuning forks, and you can just look up tuning forks and see a whole range of price points, sizes, but in general they're made out of metal. I have seen some being made out of crystal, um, but metal is, seems to be the more popular or common uh, option to find. So, just wanted to show you this. I thought this was pretty neat, so people looking into sound healing instruments would probably be entertained to see such a hyperbolic instrument. An overview of sound healing instruments wouldn't be complete without demonstrating crystal bowls.
Crystal bowls are probably the most popular common form of sound healing that you'll find anywhere around. And it makes a lot of sense why. The sound that comes from these instruments is very powerful, very unique, and something that just penetrates super deeply. And I think that that's one of the reasons why they hold such excellent space for meditation. They have the benefits of the crystal instruments that we've been discussing, which is that the sound just sustains for a really long time off of a single strike. And they activate all types of activity in the brain and in the body. So I definitely see why these have become popular. They're easy to play and you can do guided meditation with them. And they're able to be very calm and quiet, but also very loud and, and forceful too. So they have a range that they're able to express. They're a little bit limited in the sense that they're monotone instruments. They only make one, essentially one note. That's a fundamental pitch that comes from each one of the bowls. So we have a full set of seven that are tuned to 432. And if you don't know anything about tuning standards, 432 just means that there are 432 cycles of the wavelength per second to create the note A. And some people say that 432 is better for sound healing because it's more in harmonious alignment with the movement of astral bodies and the dimensions, for instance, of the earth, moon, and the sun, the ratios of their distance, and all kinds of other things pertaining to the mathematics of 432 and geometry. We're not going to get into all that here, but it is exciting to see that a company like Minel, which is a pretty large instrument company, is actually taking note of the sound healing world and choosing to manufacture instruments that are tuned to that. So that's going to appeal to a lot of people. And we have these instruments for sale right now through the Dig Project, so you can go to the website and check it out and start to get some of these instruments in your life. So just to show you a little bit what they sound like, there's no way to capture the energy of any of these instruments through microphones, really, because the instruments in person are felt by the entire body, and the vibrations have a physical impact beyond the recording range of a microphone. The human ear only really hears between 20 and 20,000 hertz. So anything else that's perceived by the body, but not just the ears, won't be recorded by a microphone, because a microphone is not designed to capture those vibrations but I think you'll get a good sense of it anyway. So here's what it sounds like if I just strike the instrument once. And it's gonna keep ringing like that, and then Hana can strike another one. A little bit of a lower sound. And I have a couple more on the ground, so if I strike one of these low ones, and the other one. And this chord starts to emerge. And because all the instruments are tuned with mathematical precision, they just fit really well together. The sounds are going to be very harmonious, and there's no way to play a wrong note. Um, this scale is tuned to 432, so it will only work with other instruments that are also tuned that way. Instruments like guitars can be tuned to any frequency, so it's gonna work with that. But some other instruments that are manufactured to only produce certain notes, they won't be tunable to 432, so that's something to consider if you wanna use these instruments in conjunction with other instruments that you have. There are other sets of bowls that may be tuned to standard 440, so you don't have to get 432 bowls, but if you want them, it's great that they exist. Another way that the instrument works is, like with the metal bowls, you can start to go around them. And this will sustain infinitely until you stop. And the company has produced a series of different mallets. So these have different weights and different substances even that are coated with them. So that results in some different usages. The, the heavier weight, but with a softer attack, creates a sort of different impression than this more firm strike. So it's nice that they've produced a range of 
of mallets that you can choose from or that come with the instruments, really worth considering adding some crystal bowls to your life. I think that they are, they're beautiful looking instruments, beautiful sounding instruments. They're fragile, so you need to be very careful about where you store them and how you treat them. Some people put water inside of the instruments or candles, and that creates a beautiful glow through the quartz from inside. And the water can be crystallized into different formations through the vibrations. So some people that study cymatics have revealed that different vibrations can program liquids and other mediums with certain geometric shapes. So people may choose to do meditation, put water in the bowl with their intentions, play the instrument for a period of time, maybe sing along or do chanting with the instrument, and then to drink the water or use the water to feed the plants or do other things. So that's part of the way that these instruments can be used in conjunction with candles and water and other elements. Thank you again for watching. We hope you got a lot out of this video when it comes to making a good decision about the next sound healing instrument that you want to bring into your life. Sound healing instruments are so great and you can hit like and subscribe for lots more videos and tutorials about throat singing, didgeridoo, beatboxing, and other instrument demos and to find them on our store through the Didge Project. So thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye.